Hi everyone, um, this is just a short video update uh, for the week. Um, I'll be talking a little bit about the this past week's assignments and the upcoming assignments for this week. So in week one you were asked to do a couple of things. One was to introduce yourself to me um, in the class um, and it was really great to read a little bit about who all of you were. There's some very interesting stories. Um, I'm looking forward to learning more about you as the class progresses. Um, those, everyone, if you had posted for this week, you could have earned three points under the discussion. So even though that column in your gradebook will say three out of 54 points, you should know that if you have three points, you have earned all of the points possible up till, up till now. And I'll give you those updates, updates every week because, as I mentioned before, um, that column is a running total. And so until the very end of the class, it won't quite be accurate. So I'll just let you know what it's at so that you can judge for yourself where you're at. You were asked also to finish this uh, confidence assessment to take a little quiz that lets me sort of get a sense of the class overall. Um, it's helpful for me to see where people judge their skills. Um, but I just also want to draw your attention to a few aspects of that survey because um, it is research and this is a research class. And so just as a sort of um, highlight for future things that we'll talk about in this course, uh, you probably already recognize, recognize that this was a survey. Um, and most surveys are what we would refer to in the world of research as self-report data. This means that people report on what they think. Um, this particular type of survey had both quantitative data as well as qualitative data. So the open-ended questions that you were asked to sort of fill in the blank that is what we would refer to as qualitative data. It requires me to do some interpretation of the results as the researcher. Um, it allows me to dig a little bit deeper than just uh, an assignment of a numerical value. Um, and the way I sort of have to make sense of that data is to uh, turn it into sort of categories or themes, um, big ideas, as a way of organizing that. We'll talk more about this in the future as well. Um, the other questions that you were asked to answer, where you rate, rated your confidence and your abilities on a scale from uh, 1 to 5, or strongly agree to strongly disagree, um, this is what we would refer to as quantitative data. The particular type of question you're probably quite familiar with, if you've ever done surveys before, um, we, talk, we call this a Likert style question. And what this kind of data lets me do is to identify general trends or patterns of a population, in this case of students taking COM 224. It usually results in numerical data and I can utilize mean, median, mode, and range as ways of describing the population in that case. So if we could look, we can look at this very briefly. I just have two questions here that I pulled out from the survey. Um, one of the things I think is most interesting about research is that it can surprise you. Sometimes you have expecta expectations of what you think you're going to find when you construct a research study. And sometimes you find things that are unexpected. Um, in this case, this year, one thing I found really interesting was that People didn't rate themselves as super confident in knowing how to effectively use Google. So you can see here, the mean was 3.17, but the median and mode were 4. That means people said they strongly disagreed with this statement, or were more toward the end of strongly disagree with the statement. I found that quite interesting because that's kind of a change from data that I have had in the past, where students have felt very confident in their ability to use Google. That is one of the things we'll work on in this uh, course, and we'll do some assignments around later on. Um, and then some things, rather than uh, shock you, are sort of consistent with what you expect when you do research. And this 
other question, um, students tended to rate this very similarly to students in the past. And I think this is a hard thing. Uh, it's a hard skill to develop. And we will begin to work on it in this class, but it's something that you will continue to work on throughout your research and writing courses here at PSU. So it's the ability to feel confident in your ability to write with a clear and authoritative voice. So you can see it's not that different in terms of the mean um, from the other question, um, but the range is a bit smaller. And the range tells me that um, while there's more variation here in students, uh, in whether students feel very confident or not very confident in their ability to use Google, um, there's a smaller range here. So in general, people feel about middle ground in terms of their ability to write with an authoritative voice. So I just bring up those things now as a kind of preview. You know, uh, you didn't have to catch everything here. We'll be talking more about quantitative and qualitative data later in the course. We'll be talking about Likert style questions. Um, and we'll be talking about uh, what kind of analysis people do in qualitative data. So the open-ended questions, um, in order to make sense of them as a researcher, I need to like maybe turn those into sets of categories. So as I, I was reading through these, I was able to identify four to five main categories of um, how people responded. So people are worried about time management and falling behind, um, about clearly understanding assignments, or even being able to write clearly and express their ideas. Um, certainly the academic element of this and the research paper itself um, gives some people a little bit of worry. Um, and then no FaceTime, so the online aspects of the course. Students are very excited about improving skills, both writing skills and research skills. Um, learning about evaluating scholarly literature, um, seeing how research relates to other parts of their lives, and then finishing, finishing the class. Um, and then lastly, you know, these are all values that would really definitely help you in the course, paying attention to quality or detail, um, hard work, honesty, focus, asking for help, and being willing to overcome or motivated to overcome failures that may have happened in the past. So each week I'll give you a little bit of overview of assignments that have that um, we've completed that week and then I'll talk a little bit about what's coming up. So um, coming up this week you have a few things. You have an assignment for me, uh, Browsing Communication Research. I think it's called Browsing Communication Journals. I just wanted to show you, this is what a communication journal looks like. So what I'm asking you to do is to go to the library website to look up the name, the title of those three communication journals. Um, so this one's called Communication and Cultural Critical Cultural Studies. So it would be called Journal of Communication. To pick a volume and an issue, and to look at the articles that are being published in that volume, and to read the titles and the abstracts and to choose one. The idea is that I just want you to begin to develop a sense of the type of research that is being published in communication journals. Um, so this is a good opportunity for you to get a, a lay of the land, a sense of what's out there. The video that's attached to the assignment guidelines should be helpful in explaining how to find those journals in the library. The other thing you need to do for me this week is participate in the class discussion. Again, this one is going to be focused on the theme of fake news. Um, one thing to keep in mind there is that this is the first week we'll have identified discussion leaders. So make sure that I'm um, sorry, you pay attention to that under the weekly schedule. So you'll see under week two, you have the list of things that you, um, oh, this is week two. Under week, yeah, two, you have the list of uh, videos you're expected to watch, things that um, you're asked to look at. And you'll see discussion leaders highlighted here and the names of students. 
I'm making one video for multiple classes, so if these names don't match up to names in the class, don't worry too much about it. Um, but pay attention to that. And each week from here on out, um, there will be discussion leaders identified. I've tried to highlight those, but be paying attention to that so that if your name comes up, you can see that. It also goes in alphabetical order, so you can probably figure out like when you're going to be up next, too, based on your last name. And then lastly, um, the thing you're asked to do for me is to complete your Unit 1 test. So the link for that isn't up yet, but it will be up no later than Wednesday this week. It will be a short test. It will cover the syllabus, the material from um, the first week, and the material from this week. So I would suggest taking notes as you look as you read through the PowerPoints. Um, and it again, I think you'll find that it's fairly easy, but um, just be prepared. Remember about the unit test is that it's not timed. Uh, you can open it up and read the questions, close it down, come back to it later, but you can only submit answers once. So I just highly recommend that you take the time to find the answers. If there's something you're unsure of, you know, pause, go back and see if you can find it elsewhere, then come back to it. There should be no reason that you can't get 100% on these. Um, pay attention in particular to the looking ahead. So I have went and opened up next week. Next week we start our second unit in the class about finding and evaluating sources. And you can take a quick peek at the kinds of stuff that's going to be coming up there. So you can start to prepare ahead of time. All right, if you have any questions um, about the upcoming week or about the assignments for last week, please do not hesitate to contact me and get a hold of me. And um, that's it.